All right, folks, we want to take you now to the Kennedy Space Center, where SpaceX is attempting to make history by launching an unmanned Falcon 9 rocket that's already flown. This is set to happen in less than a minute, so let's all tune in and see what's ha what happens. And, of course, let's hope for the best. LD verifies. Go for launch. Go for age of reflight. Minus 30. T minus 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Lift off the South Carolina the world's first new flight of local class rocket. South Carolina is near the tower. Falcon 9 power to left you nominal. Coming up on T plus one minute into flight. A lot of cheering here in Hawthorne. We're throttling the engines down as we get ready for maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. of flight. The next major event coming up in about 35 seconds, main engine cutoff. Coming up in about 20 seconds, we'll shut down the nine Merlin engines, separate the first stage, and light the upper stage. Good. 
Your trajectory looks good. We're at T plus four minutes, and the flight continues to be go. a successful launch of Falcon 9 carrying SES-10. First stage has separated from second stage. That's what you see on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the first stage coming back down once again. This is the second time we've launched it. This is the second time we're attempting to land it on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you, which is in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, while that first stage is coming back down, that second stage is when you continue thrusting for a few minutes, uh, carrying the SES-10 spacecraft into geostationary transfer orbit. But coming up, we're going to be tracking the first stage as it approaches our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Yes. Now, uh, we're going to have two events called out pretty quickly. We'll try to narrate those as they're uh, notified to us. We will have the landing as well as uh, the engine coast, the, the cutoff, or excuse me, the engine shutdown. So we're going to try and narrate that for you as, as, as much as we can. Uh, we also might lose the video feed of the first stage as it relands on the drone ship, as we have seen happen before. Uh, you can see that first stage coasting back right now. Uh, sometimes we do three boon burn maneuvers, uh, doing a boost back burn and then a uh, re-entry burn and a landing burn. Today, we're just doing a re-entry burn and a landing burn. So what we're doing is we're catching that first stage with the drone ship uh, as it makes its way out on a parabolic trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. Now, since planet Earth is a sphere, uh, as the rocket descends onto the drone ship, we lose the horizon. As it goes over under the horizon line, the ground stations may lose the communication feed with the drone ship. So we're going to hopefully bring you live footage. We see what you see, uh, and hopefully we'll all see it a successful landing once again all together. Uh, we do have cameras on the deck of, of course, I still love you, uh, but they're on a satellite link. Uh, so, again, those vibrations from that first stage coming down may uh, jostle the satellite link, so we can't uh, get all the video all the way down. Just be prepared for it. Um, but right now, we are uh, still tracking that uh, SES spacecraft and the second stage. Uh, looks like everything is going well so far. Yeah, primary mission is SES-10, and it's looking great this far. Uh, so let's go up to John I for a status update. T plus 6 minutes, 13 seconds into flight. All goes well. We're going to listen for the start of the entry burn coming up in just a few seconds. Entry burn, it looks like we've got a good burn. The first stage on its way back to the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, slowing down as it heads for the atmosphere. Second stage continues to be on target. Propulsion looks good. Everything continues to be go at seven minutes and five seconds into flight. So we're gonna go back down to the floor as we get ready for the landing of the first stage in the orbit of the second stage. As you just heard and saw, uh, the first stage's uh, re-entry burn has just completed. It uh, looks like the video isn't moving right now. Like we said, we're going to have some difficulty getting video as it makes its way uh, down the horizon from our ground stations. Um, but coming up very soon is going to be that landing burn. That's the final burn that happens just a few hundred feet off the deck of our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Yeah. Now, that drone ship you see on the right-hand side of your screen, that is live footage. Uh, and like we said, it's out in the Atlantic Ocean, so we're going to try and maintain that steady feed as the rocket descends, which is just in a couple of seconds here. Um, like I said before, literally just four or five seconds after we have stage landing, we should have um, indication as to the second engine cutoff, meaning that the second stage with SES-10 is in good orbit. But right now, we're just watching our screen here, waiting to, to see the... video feed from the drone ship right now. Like we said, uh, this, this is expected. Um, we don't currently have direct line of sight with that drone ship. Uh, we only have a satellite link, and as it gets down uh, kind of close, uh, the, those engine, that Merlin engine uh, can vibrate the satellite link. And sometimes we can lose video. Uh, so just stay put here. We're going to let you know.
see if we can get in touch with Elon, who's been watching along with the launch flare, and uh, see what he has to say. Three, two, one, you're live. All right, well, we just had an incredible day today. Uh, the first reflight of an orbital class booster um, did its mission perfectly, dropped off the second stage, uh, came back and landed on the drone ship uh, right in the bullseye. Uh, it's an amazing day, I think, for space uh, as a whole, for the, sp for the space industry. It means you, you, can, uh, you can fly and refly an orbit class booster, which is the most expensive part of the rocket. Uh, this is going to be ultimately a, a huge revolution in spaceflight. Uh, it's the difference between uh, if you had airplanes where you, you threw away an airplane after every flight versus you could reuse them multiple times. Um, so it's been 15 years to get to this point. It's taken us a long time. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of difficult steps along the way, but um, I'm just incredibly proud of the SpaceX team for being able to, to uh, achieve this um, I think, incredible milestone in the history of space. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sort of at a loss for words, but it's, it's really a, a great day, not just for, for SpaceX, but for the space industry as a whole, and, and proving that something can be done that many people said was impossible. Thank you. So this is fantastic, fantastic news for uh, everyone here at SpaceX and for humanity in general. Um, we are so happy. Uh, remember, the, the primary mission to get SES-10 into geostationary transport orbit is currently good. We have a good orbit, and, uh, and that's the primary mission we should be focusing on, even though we're really excited. Yeah. All right, folks, hopefully you have been watching and just saw what transpired on TV in front of our eyes uh, here on CBSN. Uh, the successful launch of SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket uh, made history. Elon Musk, uh, the company's billionaire founder, just uh, responded after seeing his success, calling it a huge revelation, uh, something 15 years in the making. Uh, the rocket actually uh, took off at 627 and uh, landed at 636 after successfully delivering a telecommunications satellite there that is set to provide TV, internet, uh, telephone coverage for South America.